keep on pushing. Don't a new. Oh. Look, look, and look yonder. What's that I see? Good morning, good afternoon, family. Good evening to you, whatever side of the diaspora that you are on. Let me welcome you to this thing we call the mental house, okay? Because I don't know if it's crazy inside or outside, but it's mental all over the place. And I think that it's real imperative that we begin to look at everything like we're in a mental situation. However, this is not what this video is about. My video today is really out is really a call out to people that believe in voting. Okay? And I want to thank my mother, Norma, and I want to thank my father, Ali, for giving me the foundation of what a family should be. I want y'all to know, yeah, my siblings and I, we got the same mother and the same father. That's from the school I'm from. I am a minister's kid and I am a missionary's kid. So from that perspective, I'm going to give y'all, a lot of y'all don't know what it's like to live in a house with your mother and father. In our community, um, now if you're my age, you probably have a better recollection of two-parent households. When you get down to the generation after me, so I don't think my generation did very well in producing the next video, uh, the next uh, generation, because from that, from us on out, it's willy nilly, okay? But let me tell y'all about something that these people that were born, um, these baby boomers, a lot of them sacrificed that were black, okay? African American, colored, Negro, whatever you call us these days. The point I'm trying to get to y'all is it used to be a time that y'all know, you know, you couldn't put a complaint in against the police unless you own property. I want y'all to understand how important voting and your right to bear your arms and keep them have to do with how you're counted in America. OK, how you represent it, what your representation is. And it is important that a lot of y'all know that because I hear a lot of people uh, saying, oh, don't vote. People that tell you is that sucker shit, and most of them are, aren't even high school uh, graduates or GED, or, or or most of them don't have any kind of facts to back up their logic. Okay, because this is what I can tell you for a fact. Now, again, if the police whipped your ass, beat you down, wrote tickets on you. Did whatever they felt like they do today. Okay? And if you if you weren't a property owner, you couldn't even file a complaint. Y'all just gather that for a minute. So my father was a young homeowner. And he was able to put complaints in against the city. And he wasn't afraid. My father wasn't no scary man. I remember us learning how to hit the floor and go up under the bed. When we hear the police come at the door or hit the phone, when you hear my father in the embroil, because he did an underground newspaper, okay, also called a heritage something. I can't remember. I was barely born. I was a little bitty kid. And I remember him and the men, they used to go up in the attic. And they used to, in the back then, they had the little printing press thing, and they used to print off newspapers. So much to the city of Milwaukee uh, were very, uh, they put them on a target list. And if anybody want to read about this further, uh, by John Patrick, the name is Milwaukee. The name of the book is Milwaukee Selma of the North. And you know that's really saying something because everybody know how rotten Selma, Alabama is. Well, they deemed uh, Milwaukee the Selma of the North. And then that's saying something. So if you read that book, you will read a lot of history of what my father did here, here in Milwaukee, him and uh, Clarence Sherrod and Reverend Champion and a lot of these old movers and shakers that were here in Milwaukee. OK, but what I'm saying is to say is because white folk and I say the elite folk. So I want to I make sure I clarify this, because if you poor and you white 
you ain't no, as far as uh, how they see the world, you're no different than a, a poor Negro. Um, because it is the elite. It's, it's also the have against the have nots, right? So what they've done is they've constructed a situation where if you didn't have a home, you didn't have a voice. You couldn't vote. Okay? Uh, so, these are all the little roadblocks that they threw up for people of color to want to vote. So now y'all have that opportunity and most of y'all squandered it because most of y'all think it's just a big game. I ain't been voting. There ain't nothing but some crap. Ain't nothing never going to change. Well, nothing ever going to change easy. It's never going to change overnight. But one thing I do know is when you overwhelmingly pack the courts with, I mean, the uh, 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 voting polls with bodies, that matters. Not only that, a lot of y'all complain about all white juries and jurors, but you don't vote. So your ass can't even talk about it because you're too stupid to know that how tied in that it is. So you want to talk about your partner who got life in prison because he didn't have not one black face on the jury, but you don't vote. So you don't see how important your vote is. Little things like that, that if you're not a voter, you can't even serve on the jury and you don't think it's worth it. And so if it is a big hoax, you don't think it's worth it to have a, a um, the pleasure and the civic duty to sit on a jury? I've been on the jury three times. I think I've been on in my state where I don't have to go no more if they send me. Um, uh, and, and I don't mind because I consider it my civic duty. Okay? I love juror duty. And then I got some people that say, they don't never call me. They don't never call me. I said, do you vote? No, I don't believe in that shit. Okay, well, then you're not going to vote. Well, then you're not going to be, you're not even in a boat to be called up. Okay, so we do a lot of things to cut off our noses and spite our face. And one thing I can say, and I'll end it with, on this, what's happening in Georgia is a travesty. And a lot of y'all talk crazy, um, talking about you want to vote for Donald Trump, even though you clearly see the man is mentally ill. Now, that's what get me with black people. And uh, specifically, I don't care what the other poor whites do. They are the majority. Okay, we're not the majority yet. So they say, right? And when you silly enough to say, I'm going to vote for outright white supremacist as if you just voting for the man and not the people that he put in place and the policies that are in place to wreak havoc on your life. It's not even a matter of Democrat. I don't give a damn about no Democrat and Republican. What I do know is I'm looking at policies. And if you want to find a way to get your policies through, there's no way in the world you're going to get them through on a, in the Republican Party set. There's no way. There's no way. They're showing you who they are. And some of y'all are so stupid and you think you're saying something cute by saying, I, I don't want to be no Democrat. I don't know if you had an independent, a person that was just as powerful, vote for them. But there's not. Okay? I'm just saying, I don't like the two-party system either. Especially when you got ratchet and ratcheter. Now, I do believe that they're both two wings on the same bird. Okay? But the difference is, there are differences. Okay? Because you would have never had a, the right to vote. You would have never had the right to vote. Had it not been a Democratic Party. And y'all uh, have to acknowledge that. Y'all have to acknowledge stuff and stop being so damn closed minded and um, instant fast food type of mentality that y'all don't understand the game that's been played. A lot of people tell me, oh, you being played. You from the old school. You being played. I tell you what, I'd rather have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Now, that's old school. So say the voting ain't a farce and we find that out and then your stupid self never voted, how would you feel? What would it hurt you? 
Why would somebody make it so difficult for you to vote if it didn't mean anything? Why would they want to take your guns away from you if it didn't mean anything? Y'all got to listen listen to your logic. And when you listen to your logic and, and stand it up to some other kind of truths, see if it's faulty. It's only two things this government has ever been of um, on us about, and that is trying to deny us the right to vote and taking away our guns. Okay? And if they did that, there would have never been a deacons for defense. This has been going on all through history. But you have gathered some leniency, some le leeway through the voting apparatus. Yeah, it's, it's slow. It's slow and it ain't shoot. But I tell you, all politics are local. I've seen it. I've been a part of it. Not only that, I've been an election inspector. I've worked the polls. I've actually brought candidates worked with candidates and grassroots people and watched the candidate get elected. And what the hell are you going to tell me my vote didn't matter? I would have to tell you that's a lie. And I'm talking about uh, candidates that my city was vehemently opposed to. We put them in office because all politics are local. Now, y'all want, want to... Uh, um, now we're in a situation where the midterms are coming up. I'm in a battleground state. I'm in Wisconsin. I want Ron Johnson's ass out of here. Yes, I'm very familiar with Mandela Burns. Uh, know his people. Anybody would be better than somebody that wanted to overthrow the government. Y'all might think it sounds cute to have a government overthrow and have a dictator. Well, I think that once you put America in that situation, in that environment where we don't have no kind of recourse no more, we got Donald Trump president forever, you can forget it. You got the Steve Scalise, you got the, what's the other little guy, the little um, uh, uh, Jewish guy who just got dead eyes. When you look at him, uh, not, uh, Steve Bannon is another one. Well, he'll probably be in jail for a while, but... Some of these guys, you look into their eyes. You can see the window to their souls. Unless you're blind. So you need to clear the scales from your eyes. And some of them don't mean poor people any good, especially if you're poor and black. So I just want to encourage y'all to do something in Georgia and in Wisconsin to shift it. Because I don't know what a country looks like without democracy. Okay? And I don't want to hear nobody saying we ain't never had it. So cause all you gotta do is compare our lives to the slaves of maybe eighteen hundreds and then I know damn well you will see a difference. Okay, so don't be silly. Don't cut off your nose to spite your face. And if it don't matter, well this just make this the last one that you count then, okay? At least you'll see democracy a little while longer. Okay, it's up to you. Why do you think they're trying to suppress you from voting? Stop you from voting. That means it's important. Nobody try to stop nothing that don't mean nothing. All right, I'm done. If you like what you hear, y'all tell me what y'all think. I want to hear it because a lot of y'all don't believe in voting. And please feel free to leave your comment. I want to know. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Mm -mm -mm. Don't be shy. Bye, bye, bye. All right. I'll see you in the next.